Section. Introduction. In this section, we dive into the process of creating and refining our benchmark data. We began by collecting all the website links found in the C4 validation set. Following this, we integrated all the CSS code directly into the HTML files, which allowed us to have a single, consolidated code file for each web page. This initial step resulted in a collection of 127.9 thousand web pages. We then undertook further filtering and processing steps, which we will describe in more detail. Turning visual website designs into working code is quite a complex task. It involves understanding the visual elements and their arrangement, and then converting this understanding into structured code. This complexity has made it difficult for people without advanced coding skills to create web applications, even if they have clear ideas for designs or functionalities. Moreover, the need for specialized knowledge makes the entire process of developing a web page more complicated, often requiring teamwork among individuals with diverse expertise. This can lead to differences between what was originally designed and what is actually built. The ability to automatically convert visual designs into functional code could change the game, making it possible for those without expert coding skills to quickly and easily develop front-end web applications. While there has been significant progress in generating code from natural language descriptions, turning user interface, UI, designs into code hasn't received as much focus. This is due to several challenges, such as the variety of visual and textual elements in UIs and the large number of possible code outcomes. A notable effort was made in 2017 using CNN and RNN models on a limited set of simple UI designs. However, Subsequent efforts have largely been limited to simple or artificial examples with a small range of layouts, which are not very useful for real-world front-end development. Recently, the development of multimodal large language models, LLMs, has started a new chapter in this field. These advanced models can process both visual and textual inputs and generate text outputs for a variety of tasks that involve visual elements. Examples of such models include Flamingo and GPT-4V. This breakthrough has opened up new possibilities for automatically converting website designs into code by simply taking a screenshot of the design and having the system generate the necessary code to create the desired web page. We call this task Design 2 Code and we're exploring it using the latest multimodal models to see how close we are to automating front-end development. To thoroughly and accurately assess our progress, we've created the first real-world benchmark for the Design 2 code task. Unlike previous efforts that relied on synthetic examples, we use actual web pages from the internet to ensure our benchmark reflects real-world scenarios. We collected web pages from the C4 validation set and carefully selected 484 examples that are high-quality, challenging, and diverse, representing a wide range of real-world applications and complexity levels. Our benchmark demonstrates a broad spectrum of HTML tag usage, domains, and complexity levels, both quantitatively and qualitatively. To help with efficient evaluation and model development, we've also introduced automatic metrics for this task. These metrics compare the generated web page's screenshot with the original screenshot, considering various aspects such as the match of bounding boxes, text content, and the position and color of visual elements. We found that these metrics correlate well with human judgment. We then tested how current multimodal LLMs, like GPT-4V, perform on this task. To bring out their best, we experimented with different prompting methods. This included text augmented prompting, which enhances visual input with text extracted from the web page to ease the burden on optical character recognition, OCR and a self-revision prompting method that encourages the model to compare its previous output with the input web page for self-improvement. We observed consistent improvements with the text augmented prompting method over direct prompting for both GPT-4 volts and Pro, with the self-revision method showing positive effects only on GPT-4V. Despite the impressive performance of these commercial models, they are not very transparent. To address this, we've developed an open-source model specifically for this task, Design 2 Code 18B. This model is based on the state-of-the-art open-source model COG Agent, 
which we fine-tuned with synthetically generated design 2 code data. Surprisingly, this smaller open-source model performed on par with ProVision on our benchmark, despite being trained on synthetic data and tested on real-world data. This indicates the potential of specialized smaller models and the value of learning from synthetic data. In summary, our contributions in this work include defining the design 2 code task, creating a manually curated benchmark with 484 diverse real-world test examples, developing comprehensive automatic evaluation metrics, proposing new multimodal prompting methods, and fine-tuning an open-source model that matches the performance of commercial models as judged by both human and automatic evaluations. Section Summary In this section, we curated and processed our benchmark data by scraping website links from the C4 validation set and consolidating CSS code into HTML files for each web page. This effort yielded 127.9k web pages, which underwent additional filtering and processing steps as detailed below. Section Test Set Curation In this section, we discuss how we went about creating a collection of web pages that are well structured and represent a wide range of real world scenarios. Our approach involved both automated processes and manual checks to ensure the quality and diversity of our test set. Firstly, we initiated an automatic filtering phase. During this phase, we removed all comments from the web page code to clean it up. We then applied a filter based on the length of the code excluding any web pages whose source code exceeded 100,000 tokens, as determined by the GPT-2 tokenizer. This step was crucial to avoid including web pages that were too long, which could pose challenges for current multimodal large language models, LLMs, in terms of processing or generating such extensive content. Additionally, we eliminated web pages that were solely composed of images or text, as their layout designs were overly simplistic and not suitable for our benchmarking purposes. After these steps, we were left with 14,000 web pages. To ensure that the web pages could be evaluated in isolation, we made them standalone by removing all external dependencies. This meant stripping away any tags that could link to external resources, such as script, audio, iframe, map, SVG, and link tags as well as href attributes in anchor tags and external files in object elements. For any images or videos, we substituted them with placeholder files. During the evaluation, we would instruct the models to use these placeholders to maintain the original layout as much as possible. Following the automated processing, we conducted a thorough manual review based on specific criteria. We ensured that each web page could function independently without any external files, did not contain any sensitive or potentially harmful content, and was well formatted without any overlapping layout elements. This manual curation was carried out by the first two authors, who initially worked together on 200 examples to ensure a 75% agreement rate before dividing the remaining work among themselves. This process took about a week and resulted in a refined set of 484 high-quality web pages, which we used as our benchmark. To understand the complexity and diversity of our test set, we analyzed it using several quantitative metrics. We compared our dataset with the most recent and similar dataset, website, in terms of code length, the total number of HTML tags, the depth of the DOM tree, and the number of unique tags. Our findings showed that our test examples were significantly more complex, with an average code length of 31,215.6 tokens and involving an average of 158.3 HTML tags, covering 84 types of standard HTML5 tags. The average depth of the DOM tree was 12.5, and there were on average 22.2 unique tags per example indicating a broad coverage of HTML tags and a higher level of complexity compared to previous efforts. We also looked into the variety of domains represented in our benchmark by manually annotating a sample of the web pages. The analysis revealed a diverse range of web page types, including company or organization websites, personal blogs, including technical blogs, personal homepages, information sharing sites, online forums, news articles, and product descriptions. This diversity ensures that our benchmark covers a wide spectrum of real-world web pages, 
making it a challenging and comprehensive test set for evaluating multimodal LLMs. Section Summary In this section, we curated a test set of diverse web pages by first automatically filtering out overly long or simplistic layouts, resulting in 14K web pages. We then made the web pages self contained by removing external dependencies and conducted manual curation to ensure high quality, resulting in 484 benchmark examples. These examples are more challenging and cover a wider range of complexities compared to previous datasets like website, spanning various domains such as company websites, personal blogs, and informational pages. Section Automatic Metrics In this section, we discuss how traditionally, the evaluation of generated HTML codes has relied on text-based similarity metrics like normalized edit distance and HTML BLEU. However, these metrics fall short in accurately assessing if the visual design of the original screenshot is correctly replicated. This is because the same web page can be implemented in many different ways, and even minor differences in the generated code can lead to significant visual discrepancies in the final output. To address this, we propose a method to automatically evaluate generated web pages by comparing the screenshots of reference web pages and the screenshots of the generated web pages. We approach this evaluation from two angles high level visual similarity and low level element matching. For high level visual similarity, we assess how similar the screenshots of the reference web page and the generated web page are. We do this by comparing their embeddings which are feature representations extracted after resizing the screenshots to squares. To ensure that text differences do not unduly influence our comparison, we use a specific algorithm to mask out all detected text boxes in the screenshots using their bounding box coordinates. On the other hand, low-level element matching focuses on more detailed aspects that the high-level visual similarity might overlook, such as the matching of individual visual elements including their text content, position, and color. To do this, we first use a text detection module to identify visual element blocks in both the reference and generated web page screenshots. Each block is defined by its textual content and bounding box coordinates. We then employ the jonker volgenant algorithm to find the best matches between the blocks from the reference and generated web pages based on text similarity. We measure the success of our element matching in several ways. First, we look at whether all visual elements from the reference web page are present in the generated web page without introducing any new, non-existent elements. We calculate this by comparing the total sizes of all matched blocks to the total sizes of all blocks, including those that were unmatched because they were either missed by the generated web page or were incorrectly added. Next, we evaluate the text similarity between matched blocks, using a method that counts twice the number of overlapping characters divided by the total number of characters in both strings. This gives us a character level similarity score. We also assess the positioning of the blocks, as their placement can significantly affect the overall layout. For each matched pair of blocks, we calculate a position similarity score based on the maximum difference in their normalized coordinates. Lastly, we evaluate the color similarity between the text in matched blocks, using a formula that accounts for the complexities of human color vision to assess the perceptual difference between the colors. It's important to note that we intentionally avoid computing an aggregate score across these different dimensions. This is because our goal is to provide fine-grained diagnostic scores that can help identify specific areas where models and methods may need improvement. Ideally, Models should perform well across all these dimensions to ensure a high-quality replication of the original web page's visual design. Section Summary In this section, we introduce a method to automatically evaluate generated web pages by comparing the similarity between reference web page screenshots and rendered screenshots of generated web pages. We assess both high-level visual similarity by comparing embeddings of screenshots and low-level element matching by examining details like text, position, and color alignment between visual elements in the reference and generated web pages. Our approach includes metrics for block matching, text similarity, position alignment, and color difference to provide a comprehensive evaluation without computing an aggregate score, aiming to diagnose model weaknesses across various dimensions. Section. Benchmarking, 
prompting and fine-tuning. In this section, we explore different methods and models to evaluate their effectiveness in our benchmark tests. This includes using commercial API models through prompting techniques and enhancing open source models through fine tuning. Firstly, we delve into multimodal prompting methods, which involve using commercial large language models, LLMs, that can process both images and text prompts to generate code. Specifically, we experiment with two of the top performing APIs available to the public, GPT-4V and ProVision. Our approach begins with what we call direct prompting. Here, we give the model a screenshot of a web page and instruct it as if it were an expert web developer, asking it to recreate the website using HTML and CSS, with all CSS included in the HTML file. We specify using a placeholder image named rick.jpg for any images and to avoid adding any external dependencies or JavaScript for dynamic elements. The focus is on accurately replicating the size, text, position, color, and overall layout of the original web page. Next, we introduce text augmented prompting. This method acknowledges that users often know the text content they want on their web page but need help converting their design into code. To assist with this, we first extract all text elements from the web page and then append these texts to the instruction prompt along with the screenshot. This reduces the model's need to perform optical character recognition, OCR, and allows it to concentrate on the layout design, making it easier for the model to place the text content correctly. We also experiment with self-revision prompting, inspired by recent advancements in ILM's ability to refine their outputs. In this approach, we provide the model with the original web page screenshot, a screenshot of the web page generated from the text augmented prompt, and the initial code generated. We then ask the model to improve this initial code to make the final result more closely resemble the original web page. We apply the same prompts for both GPT-4 volts and ProVision, ensuring high-resolution output and precise control over the generation process. Moving beyond commercial APIs, we aim to provide an open-source alternative by fine-tuning an existing model, which we refer to as Design 2 Code 18B. Our base model, COGAGENT18B, is capable of processing high-resolution inputs and has been pre-trained on a diverse set of data, including text image pairs, synthetic documents, latex papers, and a small data set of website information. For fine-tuning, we use the Hugging Face website dataset, which consists of pairs of website screenshots and their corresponding code implementations. This dataset is created by first generating website ideas and then using another model to create simple websites based on these ideas. Due to limited computational resources, we only use a random 20% sample of the original dataset for training. We also adjust the order of HTML elements based on preliminary findings that suggest this leads to better performance. However, we note that training on real-world web page data presents significant challenges due to the length and complexity of the code, which results in lower performance compared to synthetic data. We leave the exploration of real-world data training for future work. For the fine-tuning process, we employ LoRa, a technique for adding trainable parameters to a model without significantly increasing its size, and adjust the model over 5,000 steps with a warm-up phase of 100 steps. This training is conducted on powerful NVIDIA A6000 graphics cards and takes approximately two days. During inference, we adjust the generation settings to optimize performance and select the best model checkpoint based on its performance on a small development set. Through these methods, we aim to comprehensively evaluate and compare the capabilities of both commercial API models and open source alternatives in converting web page designs into code. Section Summary. In this section, we benchmark various models and methods for performance comparison, including prompting commercial API models and fine-tuning open-source models. We explore multimodal prompting methods, such as direct prompting where a web page screenshot is provided for code generation, text augmented prompting to focus on layout design, and self-revision prompting to improve generated code. Additionally, 
we fine-tune the open-source COGAGENT18B model with the Hugging Face website dataset, using LoRa for fine-tuning and achieving improved transparency compared to commercial API models. Section. Additional Baselines. In this section, we delve into comparing our fine-tuned design 2 code 18 b model with two other open-source models to understand its performance better. We stick to the default settings recommended for these models for a fair comparison. Firstly, we evaluate our model against the original COGAGENT18B model to see the improvements our fine-tuning process brings. For this comparison, we use a screenshot along with a simple instruction to write the HTML code. Secondly, we assess our model against the Hugging Face website VLM8B, which, to our understanding, has been fine-tuned on a comprehensive website dataset. It's important to note that this comparison isn't exactly like-for-like like due to differences in the foundational models and the volume of training data. Despite these differences, we include it for a thorough analysis. When it comes to automatic evaluation, we present our findings in a table and a figure, acknowledging that these comparisons might not be entirely equitable due to variations in model sizes and training datasets. However, these models are the most relevant and accessible benchmarks we have. Our observations reveal several points. GPT-4V outperforms the others in almost all aspects except for color, where website VLM8B takes the lead. Adding text to the prompts enhances the block match and text similarity scores for both GPT-4 volts and ProVision, highlighting the value of including text elements. We also notice a slight improvement in block match and position similarity scores with self-revision for GPT-4V, though it doesn't seem to help ProVision, possibly due to the limited self-correction capabilities of large language models without external feedback. Our fine-tuning significantly boosts performance across all metrics when comparing Design 2 Code minus 18B with Cog Agent 18B. However, when compared to website VLM8B, our model performs better in block match and text similarity but falls short in position similarity and color similarity, which could be attributed to the stronger base model and more extensive fine-tuning data. Moving on to human evaluation, we believe it's essential to understand how humans, the end users of these web pages, perceive the generated content. We hired human annotators at a rate of 16 per hour to conduct a series of evaluations on 100 examples from our benchmark. Each evaluation involved five human annotators, and we determined the outcomes based on majority votes. We detail our evaluation protocol and the instructions provided to annotators in an appendix. For the pairwise model comparison, we followed established practices for evaluating instruction following large language models. We asked annotators to compare pairs of generated web pages, one from a baseline model and one from the tested methods and decide which one more closely resembles the reference. Using ProVision direct prompting as our baseline, we calculated the win, tie, lose rates for the other seven methods against it, ensuring a random order to avoid bias. A pair was only considered a win or a loss if it received a majority of at least three votes, with all other outcomes recorded as ties. Our findings show that GPT-4V significantly outperforms the baselines, and both text augmented and self-revision prompting offer improvements over direct prompting. However, adding self-revision didn't provide additional benefits, likely due to the complexity of understanding and reflecting differences between two images in the HTML code. Website VLM8B showed better performance than direct prompting, indicating that extensive fine-tuning can compete with commercial models in specific areas. Lastly, our Design 2 Code minus 18B model matched the performance of ProVision Direct Prompting, showcasing its competitive edge. Section Summary In this section, we compare our fine-tuned Design 2 Code 18B model with two other open-source baselines, the original COGAGENT18B model and the Hugging Face website VLM8B. Despite differences in model sizes and training data, we observe that GPT-4V excels in various dimensions. Text augmented prompting enhances block match and text similarity scores, and fine-tuning significantly improves performance across all dimensions, 
with Design 2 Code 18B outperforming in block match and text similarity but lagging in position and color similarity compared to website VLM8B. Section. Direct Assessment. In this section, we delve into a direct assessment to better understand how close we are to automating front-end engineering. We're curious about whether AI can now create web pages that could stand in for human-made ones. To get a clearer picture, we asked human annotators to compare the best AI-generated web pages, crafted using GPT-4V's self-revision prompting, with the original web pages. Each comparison was reviewed by five annotators, and we went with the majority's opinion. The detailed instructions given to these annotators are available in the appendix of our paper. We approached this assessment from two angles. First, we wondered if the AI-generated web pages could be used interchangeably with the original ones. After mixing up all the examples, we had annotators evaluate whether the two versions were similar enough in appearance and content to be used interchangeably. The results were quite revealing, with 49% of the AI-generated web pages deemed interchangeable with the originals. Next, we shifted our focus to see whether the original web pages or the AI-generated ones were considered better designed, without letting the annotators know which was which. Interestingly, in 64% of the cases, the AI-generated web pages were preferred, suggesting they were better designed than the originals. We think this might be because the AI model has access to a wide range of modern and popular web page design principles, allowing it to enhance the original designs automatically. This finding opens up exciting possibilities for future tools aimed at improving website design. We also noticed some intriguing differences between automatic evaluation results and human evaluations. For instance, human evaluators rated GPT-4V's self-revision prompting higher than text augmented prompting, a contrast to the mixed results from automatic metrics. Additionally, despite humans favoring website VLM8B over Design 2 Code 18B, the latter scored lower on automatic evaluations for block match and text similarity. To understand these discrepancies better, we studied the correlation between automatic metrics and human preferences. By splitting 588 human annotations into training and test sets, we used logistic regression to predict wins or losses based on differences in metrics. The model showed 76.9% accuracy, highlighting that humans often prioritize high-level visual effects and layout over detailed content. This suggests that while human evaluation is invaluable, it should not be the sole criterion due to potential cognitive biases. Instead, a balanced approach considering both high-level similarity and detailed content is essential for evaluating new models and methods. Lastly, we explored what makes a web page difficult to generate by examining the correlation between automatic metrics and various difficulty indicators, such as the total number of tags, the number of unique tags, and the DOM tree depth in the reference implementation. Our findings indicate that a higher number of tags is a strong indicator of difficulty, with more tags generally leading to lower scores across all dimensions. We also charted the learning process across different dimensions of automatic evaluation to understand performance variations. This involved tracking the normalized performance of each aspect from the initial model checkpoint through all training checkpoints. We observed that performance in areas like block match, text, and position quickly plateaued after 2,000 training steps, likely due to these being core capabilities of the base model. In contrast, aspects like color similarity showed continuous improvement up to 4,000, 5,000 steps, suggesting that generating accurate color codes benefits significantly from HTML training data and could be further enhanced with comprehensive fine-tuning using the full website dataset. Section Summary. In this section, we directly assess the capabilities of AI-generated web pages compared to human-designed ones by asking human annotators to evaluate their similarity and design quality. Surprisingly, the AI-generated web pages were found to be interchangeable with reference web pages in 49% of cases and were preferred in terms of design in 64% of cases. We also explore the discrepancies between automatic and human evaluations highlighting that humans prioritize high-level visual effects and layout over detailed content, 
emphasizing the importance of considering both perspectives in evaluating new models and methods for web page design. Section. Qualitative Analysis. In this section, we delve into a detailed examination by manually reviewing instances where our newly introduced methods of text augmented prompting and self-revision prompting lead to enhancements when applied to GPT-4V. We start by exploring how text augmented prompting, in comparison to direct prompting, often results in generated content with higher recall, particularly with texts. An example we observed shows that while direct prompting might overlook significant portions of text content, text augmented prompting can successfully retrieve these missing parts, thereby boosting the block match score significantly from 0.25 to 0.84. Moving on, we scrutinize cases where self-revision prompting further refines the outputs initially produced by text augmented prompting. Our analysis uncovers two primary areas of improvement. The first instance illustrates how self-revision can reintroduce elements that were omitted from a web page, elevating the block match score from 0.48 to a perfect 1.00, and enhancing the similarity score from 0.87 to 0.91. The second instance highlights the correction of layout mistakes through self-revision, which leads to an increase in overall similarity from 0.85 to 0.91. We also compare the performance of website VLM8B against Design 2 Code 18B through a representative example. Here, website VLM8B outperforms in terms of coloring and overall layout, with scores significantly higher than those of Design 2 Code 18B. However, it's noted that website VLM8B tends to create texts that weren't in the original content leading to lower scores in block match and text similarity when compared to our model, indicating a trade-off between visual and textual accuracy. In the realm of multimodal large language models, LLMs, these models are enhanced with an additional encoder to process multimodal inputs, especially visual data. For instance, BLIP2 integrates Vision Transformers, VIT, with large language models through a structure known as QFormer aiming to improve adaptability to unseen tasks. This is further supported by instruction tuning, where models like LLAVA and Instruct Blip are trained to handle complex image-based questions and answers by prompting GPT-4 with specific datasets. This approach not only broadens the training data but also incorporates elements like grounding and optical character recognition, OCR, into the fine-tuning process setting a new benchmark for evaluating capabilities in realistic front-end engineering tasks. Regarding UI code generation, the process involves reverse engineering mobile user interfaces by identifying elements through traditional text recognition and computer vision techniques, such as OCR and edge detection, and then generating code based on these elements. Projects like PIX2 Code have developed end-to-end -end systems for transforming UI designs into code using convolutional neural networks, CNNs, and recurrent neural networks, RNNs. This field is evolving with the integration of neural network-based object detection and semantic segmentation, alongside advanced visual and language decoders, to fine-tune the generation process based on visual similarity. However, the challenge remains in handling complex visual encodings and long text decodings for real-world UIs, which often contain a limited variety of simple elements. Lastly, our work also connects to the development of code language models and programming support tools, such as Codex, Encoder, CodeLama, and DeepSeek Coder. These models have sparked a new wave of applications aimed at supporting programming tasks, including automatic code completion and infilling and facilitating conversations with code bases. This advancement has led to a surge in human-computer interaction, HCI, studies focused on designing better tools for human-AI collaboration. Our benchmark aims to provide a realistic evaluation for code LLMs and to foster more effective programming support for front-end designers, enabling them to collaborate seamlessly with LLMs without the need for direct coding.